We are very excited uh, to have uh, the opportunity to work on this project, and I'll try to give you an overview of what we try to do. This is, uh, well, the title of our project is Role of Proteostasis and Organelle Homeostasis in Brain Resilience, and th this is the team, in addition to myself, uh, will collaborate with Hua Chu, who is one of the pioneers in generally EM techniques, and in particular cryo-EM and cryo-electron tomography, uh, who is setting up a really beautiful facility at SLAG, and Serena Jung, a uh, professor in computer science that is an expert in AI. So I don't think I need to tell you that aging is the biggest risk factor for neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer, Parkinson, as well as many other uh, diseases that are actually linked to protein aggregation and formation of amyloids. So it seems that aging increases the risk of protein-based diseases, and there is a lot of evidence from many model systems that aging is associated with a very sharp decline in what is now a day is called proteostasis capacity. So what, oops, other way. Okay, so what is proteostasis capacity and what is proteostasis? It's the result of uh, the work of a very elaborate network of enzymes in the cell that together maintains proteins in their correct conformation, and if they are not in the correct conformation, they identify misfolded proteins and targets them for clearance or for resuscitation, let's say, and refunctionalizing. So the proteostasis network does many very different things in the cell. It helps proteins fold, identifies misfolded proteins, targets them for degradation, and also one very important function of the proteostasis capacity is it helps with organelle biogenesis, mitochondria, ER, lysosome, nucleus integrity, and also helps with organelle quality control. So the function, one of the main interests in my lab is to understand how this very complicated network works, and the challenge is to understand how all of these processes talk to each other, and what we want to see in this project is understand how these circuits are affected with brain aging. And just to bring home the interrelatedness of all of these processes, this is uh, a result from a postdoc in my lab, Ian Cho, that uh, is here looking in a normal cell at HSP70. This is a cytoplasmic chaperone that helps proteins fold, misfolded proteins to get degraded, functions in mitochondrial import, and it's co-staining it with a lysosomal marker. So in a normal cell, HSP70 and lysosomes don't really seem to talk to each other, but when we damage lysosomes with LLOME, all of the soluble HSP70 seems to relocalize to lysosomes to help repair them. So you can see how any misfunction in lysosomal function will impair cytosolic functions of HSP70, and vice versa, a loss of function in cytosolic HSP70 will impair organelle integrity. So the way we see the decline of proteostasis with aging and it's linked to disease is this type of vicious circle that we really don't understand, whereas aging helps or impairs proteostasis capacity, and this has a negative interaction with stochastic stresses like infection or inflammation or with mutations such as mutations in alpha-synuclein or a beta precursor protein, and this leads to a vicious circle that eventually collapses the system and leads to aging phenotypes, and in the case of the brain, loss of resilience and neurodegeneration. And this circle doesn't just affect proteins with mutations, even normal proteins need this machinery of chaperones and uh, stress responses to function normally. They establish some sort of functional environment for the cell, so when proteostasis declines, many proteins will stop functioning even if they function normally when we are young. So the hypothesis of our project is that molecular phenotypes of brain aging result from failure of quality control mechanisms, and that if we would understand this process and find ways to maintain or augment it, we would have therapeutic strategies for a wide range of aging-linked neurodegenerative diseases. We have two major aims 
understanding how aging affects the subcellular architecture of neurons, so how it affects organellar integrity, the distribution of quality control factors in aged neurons, and for this, the work of Wachu's lab doing in situ structural biology is going to be fundamental, and the AI uh, work from uh, Serena's lab is going to be very important to interpret this very complex uh, uh, data. And also, we want to look mechanistically at understand how this in situ structural biology relates to actual mechanisms via both functional proteomic and translatomic measurements. And our basic hypothesis is that. This knowledge will help us understand the problem, but also will develop assays to assess the impact of interventions in disease. So the two systems we are going to work, one of is a system that was developed by Ian Cho in my lab in collaboration with Marius Vernick's lab, and this is really actually amazing that it works. So we take fibroblasts from human donors, so both young and aged, as well as patients having both sporadic and genetic forms of AD. We do direct differentiation to cortical neurons, and by a number of proteomic profiling experiments and functional assays, we see that not only are the epigenetic aging signatures retained in uh, uh, these neurons, that reflect aging or aging and AD, but we also see functional and proteomic signatures of proteostasis decline. And what's interesting is many of these signatures would not be visible by transcriptomics. So we can actually capture defects in the proteome of uh, either aged or aged and AD patients from starting from dermal fibroblasts. The other system we have been using is mouse brain tissue, so, so both from young and aged and AD models of mice, and for some experiments, we've also compared this to human brain tissue. So the take home message from our analysis of these systems is that they yield similar, but also complementary insights into uh, neuronal and brain aging phenotypes. And one of the things we hope to do eventually, maybe not in the first three years, is to be able to develop these type of systems for uh, testing drugs and interventions. So what are we going to do? We have a three-pronged approach of looking at molecular and cellular phenotypes, in situ structural biology, and AI computational analysis. My lab is going to primarily uh, pri uh, carry out most of the uh, more functional assays here. I'm showing you just a proteomic comparison of neurons from derived from aged and young uh, individuals. And most of the changes we see are in the proteostasis machinery. We also see further changes in AD. Uh, WA is going to primarily uh, spearhead the in situ structural biology. This is actually an image from an ongoing collaboration between WA's lab, my lab, and Serena's lab, looking at neurons derived from mice uh, that have Huntington's disease or Huntington model mice, and we see dramatic differences in the morphology of mitochondria, as shown here, both different types of Huntington uh, uh, mouse models having their neurons dramatic changes in mitochondrial morphology that we can interpret based on Serena's approaches. So our short-term goals uh, are here. We want to understand how aging impacts the machinery that promotes proteostasis and QC, define key properties of organelles and protein function and their architecture in the cell, and mechanistically link these phenotypes to uh, uh, disease to disease. And uh, one of the things that we eventually hope to do is to develop assays that facilitate diagnosis and suggest therapeutic approaches. Long term, I think this type of approach can, in addition to provide fundamental insi insights, if we can extend it to samples taken from clinical patients with known uh, uh, disease manifestations, maybe we can link the molecular mechanism that we derive from this patient fibroblast transdifferentiated to neurons to actually disease development. Uh, so that's in a nutshell it. <laughs>